Hello everybody and welcome back to my classic USFL franchise with the New Orleans Breakers. We are in the NFC Conference Championship game and we're going to be facing the New York Knights, the number one seed, who are 15 and 2. They got to this round by barely escaping the Oklahoma Outlaws last week, 34 to 31. And the winner of this conference championship game will be playing the Jacksonville Bulls in the inaugural classic USFL championship game as the Bulls defeated the Dragons 33 to 10. As I did live stream that game on this channel, if you're interested, go ahead and take a look at that. Let's go ahead and do a quick preview of the New York, New York Knights. So as you can see, the New York Knights, you know, if you've been paying attention, have been dominating the league all year, maybe along with Jacksonville. They are first in passing yards, passing for 292, per, 292 yards a game. They're second in points scored with 26.2 a game. And they're also first in taking the ball away on defense with 20 takeaways. And they're also first in points given up per game at 15.6 so they've just been dominating all year you know when you win 15 games that's pretty much what you do and you can also notice on the injury report they're they're totally healthy they have no injury no injuries whatsoever let's take a quick look at the last few games they've had and then we'll go in game So the Knights have won their last seven games, including the playoffs. As you can see, they've just been dominating opponents, you know, on defense especially, you know, giving up six points to the Stars, ten points to the Dragons. You know, Dragons made it to the AFC Championship game. The Federals only scored 14 on them. Michigan Panthers only scored six. So just a totally dominating team. We actually did play the Knights earlier on in the season, if you recall. Way back in week two, uh, we lost the Knights 31 to 17 at New York. So if you remember, we started off 0 4. The Knights were one of the teams we lost to. So with that, let's go ahead and go in game, and there might be just a few things we need to do before kickoff, and then we'll. We'll see what happens in our in our in the NFC Championship game. Well, unlike the team we're facing, we do have a couple of players who are going to be out this game, and so that's going to leave us a little bit short numbers-wise at the guard position and the corner position. So, with Paul Hampton being out, that only gives us a total of four players at the center and guard positions, which I'm a little uncomfortable with doing that. And at the corner position, Ramon Melvin is going to be out. And so that only leaves us with four corners. I'd rather have five. So let's go ahead and remedy that and upgrade some players from the practice squad or assign free agents. All right, on the practice squad, we have Delonte Shepard. We can go ahead and promote him from the practice squad here. That should take care of the guard position. And at corner, we have Jermichael Stapleton, but he's very low at 61 overall. Let's let's see if maybe there's somebody in free agency or somebody we can, if there's a, a better player, we can promote to the active roster. Deontay Presley looked like he'll work just fine. He's a scheme fit man-to-man -man corner. You can also play some slot in zone. So, yep, $2.15 $2 million, I think it's worth it to try and get a USFL championship here. Let's go ahead and sign him. All right, so we have five defensive tackles on the active roster. I think we can demote Percy Gills back to the practice squad here. That'll remove one player and we still have one more player that we need to either cut or move to the practice squad all right and we have five outside linebackers 
we definitely don't need that. Locus Valentine, I think. Uh, I want to keep. I have to keep him. So we, I'm gonna have to cut somebody off the practice squad. So let's go ahead and do that first. Okay, we can now move Lucas Valentine to practice squad as I released one of our very low-rated practice squad members there. And let's just make sure our depth chart is in order. First at the corner position. We'll put him there and put Tony Wilkerson at the fifth. And let's check our slot corner here. And then we'll have Duke Howard be the third one there. All right, and looks like we have a scenario here, hot opponent. Speak about ending your opponent's win streak. Coach, you're up against the Knights this week, and they've been playing great football lately. Can you end their win streak? I think we'd be confident. We feel pretty good. We've been on a streak of our own. The Knights are playing well, and all players will have plus 10 break tackle. Playing recognition and tackle for this game. The vote of confidence has your team fired up for this week's game. All players will have plus 10 break tackle, play recognition, and tackle. Interesting. All right, and I notice we have some staff points. We have 64 staff points available. Let's see if we have any helpful upgrades that we can make. All right, so I think I want to take this game planned upgrade here. We have boost play recognition for cornerbacks, free safeties, and strong safeties. We're going to need that for this team. I'm going to go and spend it on that. And with that, I think we're ready to play our game. Uh, hopefully, we can continue on hot streak, and, and it will certainly be an upset if we can do this. But let's see if we can beat New York. So Breakers up 20 to 10 here. Knights driving in, in Breakers territory. And Addison, there, Jordan Addison, the receiver for the Knights, gets the touchdown. Cut the lead to three points, and it is now is going to be twenty to seventeen breakers in the fourth quarter. Knights driving again at the breakers ten yard line as Curtis drops back drops back to throw, and he is short of the first down. That's going to make it fourth down and in inches. Only a minute left in the game. Uh, the Knights decide to kick the field goal to tie it. They play it safe here, and this would tie the game at twenty. And the kick is good, and only 30 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Now the Breakers, with two seconds remaining, attempt a 65-yard field goal. And this kick almost made it, but it, it was, I think it was long enough, but it didn't go through the upright, so the game goes into overtime. In overtime, the Knights are driving. They're at the Breakers' 24-yard line. As Curtis drops back to throw, and he throws a strike in the end zone for a touchdown. But the overtime rules in the playoffs is both teams get the ball at least once, even if there's a touchdown scored. So the Knights go up 27 to 20, but the Breakers do get a chance to possess to possess the football. 
Breakers driving here. Third down and seven. This is just a crazy turn of events here. Goldberg is in the shotgun right here. He drops back the throw. Can't find anybody. He fumbles the football, recovers his own fumble, but he gets hurt on this play. You can't see it. So uh, the backup quarterback, Stephen Monroe, a rookie who hasn't played a snap all season long, on fourth down and 15. Breakers need a prayer here. And Monroe throws it deep into the end zone. And would you believe it? Byers catches the ball in the end zone for a touchdown. That is Mike Byers. And the Breakers end up tying the game in overtime with the backup quarterback throwing his first pass of the season. And that was just an unbelievable turn of events there in just what was a crazy game. So now we are still in overtime. Knights have the ball again. They're driving. And they throw it. And Jordan Jefferson catches the ball at the 19-yard line of the Breakers. So the Knights aren't going to take any more risk here. They're going to kick a field goal here to try and win it in overtime. And the Knights kicker misses the field goal. It hits the upright. Misses a chip shot. 35-yard field goal. And the game is going to remain tied in overtime. And the Knights coach can't believe it. So now we're in double overtime. The Knights have to possess the ball here. Curtis is back to throw. And Duke Howard, number 40 for the Breakers, picks off the football. And that gives the Breakers good field position at the 42-yard line of New York. And this is just a crazy... Crazy overtime period here. Breakers have the ball third down and 10. They're still at the 42-yard line of New York. They can't. They haven't been able to gain any yardage. And Goldberg drops back to throw, and he can't connect to the receiver there, and that's going to make it fourth down. Breakers decide to punt here. They decide not to go for a long field goal here, as that would give New York good field position if they miss. They So they down the ball at the 14-yard line. New York driving once again, third down and two at the 43-yard line of the breakers. Curtis back to throw, and he finds Jordan Anderson, Addison all the way to the 11-yard line of the New Orleans breakers. And that's going to put them in chip shot field goal territory once again. So New York's going to attempt another field goal to end the game here in double overtime. This is this was a, this was a 28-yard field goal, and they make it. And that puts an end to this crazy game as New York goes on to play Jacksonville in the USFL Championship. It was a good run for the Breakers. It was a heartbreaking defeat. The Breakers were in, this, were in control of this game at one point, and they couldn't, they couldn't finish it up. Well, after that crazy game, <laughs> we have this scenario we still need to uh, go to. Let's see what uh, we have in store for us there. Man, I know the guys were pumped to deliver for you, but we didn't get it done. Just know that showing up for the team will only help us play better. The team is disappointed with the loss, but morale remains stable after the vote of confidence. All right. That's good. So talking about the game for a second. What, what, what a crazy game. Uh, right? <laughs> uh, if I could find the game. The breakers were out of this, were dead in this game like on two separate occasions and miraculously came up with big plays in overtime to stay in it, particularly when Goldberg got hurt. Uh, Stephen Monroe, a rookie, came into the game and 
played his butt off. He threw a 50-yard touchdown on, on a fourth down to, to keep the breakers from losing the game. And he did. He made another big third down play in double overtime, I believe, to keep them in the game. So, I mean, this is the first time. This is the first game play Stephen Monroe played all season. I don't think Goldberg got hurt all season long. It was just an unbelievable effort by the Breakers, losing by three points to the team with the best record in the USFL. You know, that team is 17-3 and three now after this victory. And, you know, they definitely have a chance to win the championship game next week against Jacksonville. But Jacksonville's a pretty good team, too. So, but it was a successful season for the Breakers. Uh, we're going to be losing a couple of, of good players in the offseason who refused to sign with us. But I think we can keep it, keep the, the talent level on the roster pretty good. And... Hopefully you continue and, uh, you know, make another run next season. So with that, I'm going to end the video. Thanks once again for watching. Be sure and be on the lookout on, on, on this channel for the live stream of the USFL championship game. It should be a good game between two, the two best teams in the USFL, in my opinion. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. And be sure and like and subscribe if, if you enjoy what you're seeing. And I'll see you next time.